Hi everyone, Allie here from The Family Maple and welcome back to our 2022 Advent Board Game Countdown where we are counting down the top 24 new to me games that I played in 2022. If you have not been following along, I encourage you to go back to the beginning. There is a link in the description that will help you start back at number 24 from December 1st. But we have made it almost to the top. We are today featuring the number two best new to me game that I played this year. Coming in at number two is Coimbra. Coimbra is a game that was published by Eggert Spiel and Plan B Games. It was designed by Flaminia Brasini and Virginio Gigli, and the artwork was done by Chris Williams. This is a dice drafting and um, card drafting game that I absolutely fell in love with the look of the game. That was the first thing that drew me in. And this is one that I picked up for Christmas in 2021 and included as part of my solo challenges. Now the game out of the box plays two to four players, but there are several solo AIs available on Board Game Geek. And there is one that I really enjoyed playing, which has an kind of an AI deck of cards. It has a deck of cards that helps the AI player to make selections and you are actually playing against this AI player. And so you will either win or lose when you're playing against them. Coimbra is a game that I only played solo in 2022. And again, only played with an unofficial solo variant in 2022. And yet it's coming in at number two on my list of new to me games. I absolutely loved playing this game. I love dice drafting. I love dice placement. I love um, kind of set collection and lots of different elements in this game are things that I just really, really enjoy. So in Coimbra, what you were doing is you were trying to compete on several different influence tracks, essentially. And one of the ways that you do that is that you will be drafting dice to start with. You'll roll a bunch of dice and you will take turns drafting these dice. Once you've drafted your dice, you're going to put them into these little like castle holders that are in your player color. So you know which ones are yours. The dice that you're drafting come in a variety of different colors and the colors of the dice that you draft will come into play later in the round when you are earning income. But the pips on the dice that you draft come into play in the earlier round where you are going to use them to draft cards. So you start out by drafting dice and then you take those dice and you use them to draft cards in a display. So in the display, what you're going to have is a city um, section on the left-hand side of the board. And at the top, you can draft tiles that offer different benefits. And then in the bottom three sections, you have a row of four cards. And these are all essentially, I think noblemen is what they're called but they offer you different benefits. One of the benefits that they're going to offer is they will have a specific color and a value. And that color and value correlates to tracks that are on the right-hand side of the board, which are going to be your income phase. So as you draft these different noblemen from this display, you are going to be bumping yourself up on all of these tracks. You are trying to get to the top of these tracks or at least be ahead of the people that you're playing with or the AI in the case of the solo mode. And so you're trying to bump up on these tracks. And when you're paying for these cards, the pip value is going to dictate what order you draft them in. So the higher the pip value, the sooner you get to draft. So you get first pick of whatever you want in there, but you have to pay for the card based on the pip value of the dice. So if you use a six value dice, you will get to pick first and you'll probably get the card that you want, but you're going to have to pay six resources for that card. Whereas if you placed a two dice, 
you might not have to, um, you won't have to pay as much, but you might not get the card that you want. So it's a constant battle when you're drafting the dice of thinking about what's the pip value of that dice, as well as the color of the dice. And then with the pip value, where do I think that the other player is going to go? With the AI, it's a little bit of a gamble because they're rolling a dice and flipping cards to tell you where they go and what they're going to take. But you still kind of have some information depending on the order. If they're going first, then you'll have more and more information as you're drafting on what they're going to take or where they might go. In lower player count games, there's also dummy dice that you place into these city areas. And so it does force you, even if you're playing with only two players, if you both take low value dice, you still may not get the card you want because there's going to be a larger, a higher value pip dummy dice in each of those city sections that's going to just discard cards out of the game. And it's going to discard the most valuable cards based on the um, numbers in the corner. So that's one of the things you have to think about, particularly if you're playing lower player count or like I do in solo. Once you've drafted all of your cards, some of the cards have immediate benefits. Some of the cards will have ongoing benefits. For example, when you draft a particular color of dice, you'll get a benefit. You'll get any of the immediate benefits when you purchase those um, noblemen and add them into your tableau. Some of them will have end game scoring. Some of them will have little scrolls on them that are different colors. You're trying to collect one of all of the colors to um, do some set collection and you'll get points at the end depending on how many you've collected. And then some of these noblemen will allow you to move along this monastery board in the center. So in the center of the board, you have all of these different monastery locations and you can travel along these paths throughout the game. So when you reach one of the monasteries, you get to place a marker out there and you'll either get immediate benefit, end game scoring, in game scoring, be able to bump yourself up on these influence tracks. There's all kinds of different things that are out there. And that part of the board is actually uh, modular. So you set it up at the beginning of each game with different tiles. And so it'll be different what tiles are out there, what end game scoring is out there and um, where they're at on the board as well. So that's all switched up every game and very dynamic. Then once you've done all of those actions then you'll go into your income phase and based on the color of the dice that you drafted in that first round, you're going to earn income based on where you're at on all of these tracks. So if you had drafted an orange dice, then you're going to earn income on the coins track. So you'll get gold. If you draft a gray dice, then you're going to get soldiers. If you drafted a purple dice, then you're going to get additional movement on that, um, monastery or that that track out in the middle of the board so you can continue to move and gain additional benefits and then if you draft a green dice you're just going to get straight victory points throughout the game once you've done all of that there's one additional action that you're going to be able to take which is to fund a voyage so you can spend some of the gold or the soldiers that you just earned during the income phase to fund one of these voyages which are essentially end game scoring and there's six of them out on the board and those change every game as well. And so throughout the game, you only play over, I think four rounds and there's six of these end goals out there. So you can get four if you pay each and every round for one of these goals, or you can also get them in a, a couple different ways as well. But all of those um, soldiers or gold that you pay to fund these voyages at the end of the round, those, are soldiers and gold that you don't have when you go into the next round to actually purchase these nobleman cards as you're doing this card drafting. So it's such a tight puzzle of like when you should take each of these actions and when you should hold back. So that is like a very high level overview of Coimbra. It's another game that kind of reminds me of some of my favorites from last year being like the Magnificent where you're using these dice, um, placing them on cards and manipulating your actions and what you can do based on color and pip value and all of those things coming into play. So that is my number two new to me game from 2022, which is Coimbra. 
Thanks so much for joining us again today. We are almost there at the top and we are almost there for Christmas as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you can come back tomorrow for our very last installment of our countdown. Until then, you can like us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow along there as we share all of our um, board game content, including anything new we're going to be getting over the holidays this year. We hope that you guys are enjoying your holiday season and that all of your shopping and stressful activities are done and you're getting ready to just relax and enjoy time together over the next couple of days. We will see you back tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. Bye.